Hey guys, Ryan here, and today I'm going to bring you another replay in the Camp Panzer 50T. Um, best tier 9 tanking game is a little joke that me and uh, Felix keep saying over and over again, but it's only like kind of a half joke. It really is just an excellent tank all around. Um, in this game, we're on Live Oaks, and we are top tier. Now, this game should be about aggression. Look at where I've pinged on the map. I always find the train tracks to be the most important part of this map, but we're top tier, and Felix is in his Camp Panzer 50T this game, not Spangula, and there's no artillery. And that's going to be important for us playing aggressive, but there's one other thing we need to rely on, and that we need to hope some teammates come with us. Um, now the fact we're top tier is kind of irrelevant, even if it was a tier 10 game, me and Felix would probably have still gone to the position we're going to go to, just because of the fact there's no artillery. Uh, if we had teammates with us, obviously. So, as we race in, I want you all to keep an eye on the mini-map, and understand that when I'm driving to location, I am looking at the mini-map and the big map, and keep an eye on where the team is. Um, last thing I want to do is push aggressively uh, if there's no teammates with us. However, at the same time, being two top-tier mediums, we might be able to hold it by ourselves. And we're going to see it, rather than staying on this ridge line, me and Felix are both going to fire a shot on the move, and actually push straight across. Because as well as being top tier medium, we actually have decent turret armor um, and good gun depression. So we can fight these hills. And usually you have to be aware of artillery, but because there isn't any, we can sit here as we like and sit hold down. I'm just gonna see I'll stop for a moment to see what enemies are there, and we're actually gonna push forward again. So look how far we've made it towards their base, and the enemies have hardly moved out of it. Now the F4202P, the tier 8 premium, and even the tier 10 uh, FE4202, 200mm of frontal turret armor and last, so with a gun like this with 268 pan, and even if you had about 225 pan, if you can hit that thing's turret flat, you can just shoot straight through it. Um, either to the left or right the gun, through the gun, or I think just underneath it is flat as well. The only bit you're really going to bounce from is if you hit the top part when he's using his gun to press and which is angled. So see, he comes over, I shoot straight through his gun, and as I said, you can do that with the tier 10 one as well. Don't know what that standard B was thinking, pushing out there sideways like that. Um, and right now, we've got the FE4202 to deal with. Um, he's kind of the main threat at the moment, he's the one using his gun depression to try and hold us here. And right now, me and Felix are discussing moving to the next ridge line. Um, we're waiting for the right moment, the standard B is backed up, FV's backed up, and he doesn't have very much alpha, so now's the time to get him. Pin him through the turret on the move, he bounces off me, and now we're moving to the next ridge line. Finish off the FV, you see I aim straight for his turret, to go through him. And now we're going to have a marrow break here, and I'm going to aim for a lower plate, but I can't see it, so I aim for the turret instead. Uh, but he angles his turret, making it hard to hit the weak point, so now I'm going to try again, and I actually see the lower plate this time using the uh, armor penetration indicator. Now the Becky Lens is on the run, so now I've just got the standard B, and a Yag Tiger. Now with 268 penetration, and a fire shot into the standard B. I can pan straight through the upper plate of the Yag Tiger. Um, the superstructure is about 250, 260 effective, so I should be able to pan through the superstructure with a standard round, providing RNG doesn't shit on me a little. Uh, but right now I have no need to, I can get the gun depressing on his upper plate. Now you see there, I tried the superstructure shot and actually bounce, so now I load heat. Um, RNG cannot uh, fuck with my heat shells. Even if I get a low roll on the pad, I should still be able to pan a floor play. We'll have to back up because a VKB comes over the uh, train tracks there, and I actually managed to pan him on the move. Aim for the lower play. Gotta try not to drown myself because that would be embarrassing. And our team actually finished him off, so now I can go back to dealing with the Yag Tiger. Now I've still got heat loaded. Uh. I don't need it though, what you're going to see is I fire one more shot that actually bounces. So I say I didn't need it, I actually bounced off his upper plate at the part where the upper plate and the uh, superstructure mate. 
Now I have a lot of back to stand around. Yag Tiger's gonna die. We've got the standard B. He's gonna drive, uh, I believe, in the gap uh, behind the stand there holding the bridge up. Don't know why I struggled so much to think of what that was called. The support. Um, I'm not gonna get the shot arm, so I'm just gonna leave him. And now, I'm gonna leap forward, and I think I know where that Stritz van is. He's on that hill. The issue is, spotting him is going to be an issue because he's a Stritz van. He's got insane camo. Trying to get the Becky Lynch. Um, he's hiding well behind that building. And I keep missing. The other issue is, like, although I'm complaining about, like, the Stritz van, or talk about the Stritz van's camo, the Ugly 704, for what looks like a pretty big tank, actually has pretty decent camo too and a much scarier gun, but he is spotted in the town at the moment. Stritz van shoots at me, he's exactly where I thought he was on that hill, so I'm going to try and drive forward to get the spot on him. I can see, still struggling to spot him. Trying to keep just my turret exposed at the moment. Shirt fan does get spotted. I missed a shot into his side, which is quite a shame, but I do get some assistance for him. So, that's pretty decent. And now, I'm going to leave him and go for the leopard that was spotted over here. Full health leopard prototype. Now, I'm going to go in, and either could have survived too long. I get a shot in, multiple teammates are going to get shots in. And I was going to go for the ram, but I was worried that a teammate might take the kill, so I'm going to shoot him right before I ram him. Now, usually I would have gone for the ram, but I want the third kill, because now I have three kills, and Felix has two. So if he can get the last kill, we'll have brothers in arms. Uh, 704 gets spotted. Drive it in. Felix stops to aim. And in the Camp Hunter 50T, very accurate gun, he does actually pick up the third kill. For our brothers in arms. So yes, to conclude, this game, all about the aggressive positioning, taking into account the fact there's no artillery to allow us to go to a hold down position and just hold the team at their base basically and not let them move out. 35,000 credits profit, 4100 damage, 1100 assistance, 3 kills and another brothers in arms. And just a good sign of what aggression can do for you. 4500 damage and 800 assists for Felix and even our type 4 heavy had a decent game. So thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one.